Hello guys, it's been a week or so since Laravel 9 was released and the first day after released I shot a video about upgrading my Laravel examples project and I will link that in the description below. But today let's try to use automated tool to upgrade called Laravel Shift. It became really popular over the years in Laravel community and whenever someone asks me how to upgrade Laravel version, I always recommend Laravel Shift. It's not a free tool, with every shift you pay some money, but it totally pays off. So for example, shift to Laravel 9, let's open the pricing. There are some more expensive shifts for older versions. Laravel 9 shift from 8 to 9 costs $19. It may sound a lot, but if you count the time how much you would spend upgrading manually, it's an option. So in this video, I will try it out on the same project of laravelexamples.com, the same code base. It's a pretty small project and probably it's not worth paying $19 for smaller projects, but for the sake of demo on this video, I will spend that money and let's see what Laravel Shift suggests us because if we click Laravel 9 Learn More, it doesn't only upgrade the versions, but also tries to suggest to make changes for the code base to adapt to Laravel 9 changes. So let's see what out of that big list will be applied to Laravel examples. For those who haven't seen Laravel examples, it's at laravelexamples.com. It's a really simple project to list various Laravel examples based on some tag, viewing the full example. So it's basically five page project. One of the pages is the list of open source project, also filtered, but nothing really too fancy here. So let's upgrade that. And I've logged into my Laravel shift just by signing in with my GitHub. So I click run shift, then I choose Laravel 9, purchase. Then I need to add my GitHub, which I did already by signing in and provide the repository, the repository and the branch. And what Laravel shift will do, it will create a pull request to that branch with the suggested changes. It won't automatically update it for you because you will then review it manually. Maybe you'll disagree with some changes. So you would have a choice what to accept or not. So I provide the URL and the branch is called main. Let's see, check out and run and now it asks for my credit card number, which I will enter. Also, you can use PayPal here, but I will use credit card and let's see what the next result is. After I clicked purchase, I landed on this page and it shows the running status for my Laravel 9 shift for Laravel examples. And I will wait for a while until that status changes. What well, actually it did already. So it took like a minute or so or something. Now let's click and we will land probably on a pull request. So here's the pull request made by Laravel shift with 120 files changed quite a lot, especially if you compare with the earlier version of upgrade I showed you a week ago, which just composer JSON changes and upgrade, but probably Laravel shift made a lot of suggestions to the code improvements and let's review them now in this video. So first the review of commits, there are 17 commits made by Laravel shift. Everything is documented here, pretty self-explanatory, but then later Laravel shift made a lot of comments on what has been done specifically. So for example, Laravel nine moved resources lang to the lang folder to the top level. Then in Laravel nine, there was a change for array keys and validated. So I need to review those files. Basically what shift is doing is suggesting to review something manually. Then with this sign, which is important, probably warning transition from Swift mailer to symphony mailer, then could not upgrade the following files because those are different from Laravel 9 version. So I need to review them manually as well. And a few more warnings about ENV files, variables like file system driver was renamed, then file system cloud was removed, token driver is not available, and a few more comments like anonymous migrations, loop variable, HTTP client. So a lot of those changes were made not in Laravel 9 directly, but during Laravel 8. So at Laravel 8.x, something was introduced or changed. And I didn't change that in the code because Laravel examples as a project was created when Laravel 8.40, I think was available, the latest version. So I need to review those manually. So these are just the comment. And then at the end, the final comment is congratulations, you are now running the latest version. So these are text based comments. Now what was changed in the code here? 120 files. Let's dive into that. 
Let's try to run through those. I'm not sure how quickly we can run through 120 files, but just let's go and see what happens. So this was renamed according to that command in .env.example for the future use. Then in comment where I update the open source project data via GitHub, all that was done by Laravel shift was styling changes according to PSR standard probably. So this is not related to Laravel 9 at all. Also styling change, the order of use. This was probably removed in Laravel 9, but I didn't even notice that. Then I remember that people were telling about those being added by default in Laravel 9, but I'm not sure I really need those variables if I didn't make them in Laravel 8. Then again, styling changes for the order of use statements, something of the same. Oh, this is a good one, two semicolons. So I missed that one. This is a good change. Notice by Laravel shift, but generally I see a lot of changes just for the PSR standards or order of the use statements. And I guess a lot of those 120 files, because I have a lot of controllers for the admin area of that Laravel examples, will receive such suggestions. So I will browse through those in the background and I will stop when I find something interesting related to Laravel 9 specifically. Okay, this one is interesting, not to Laravel 9 specifically, but shift suggests to replace string class name to tag class. It's not a Laravel 9 thing and it's not a styling thing, but it's a better practice to reference that in Laravel. So this is a good one. Next, I finally see something related to Laravel 9, trust proxies. So instead of Fideloper proxy, it uses Illuminate HTTP middleware, which was one of the important changes in Laravel 9. And I was doing that exact thing in the previous video a week ago. So this change for the headers. So this is important. Next, Laravel shift suggests to delete the things that were commented out in Laravel 7 to 8 migration. I'm not sure if you're aware, but in Laravel 8 new routing syntax, and I will link the video in the description below, there was a fallback variable commented where you could define the namespace and use the older Laravel 7 syntax for the routes. And since it wasn't actually used, Laravel shift suggests to delete that commented code and not define the namespace. Also this change I remember from the Laravel 9 docs, rate limiter, although I don't use actively rate limiter, but it's good that Laravel shift suggested that change. And here's where we get to composer JSON. Let's see what was actually updated. So most of the packages were updated to the same major but different minor version. So upgraded. The main things of course are Laravel framework 9 and then Instead of facade ignition, we have Spati Laravel ignition. Also, Nuno Maduro collision was updated from five to six and everything else was just minor updates. Then a few updates related to config auth, trying to make it the same as the Laravel 9 default files. But since I never really even used those variables, I don't really care that much about that. This one is related to the very first file in ENV example. So some config changes that were done since Laravel 8. To Laravel 9. Now we're getting to the factories and Laravel shift suggests to remove that because somewhere in Laravel 8.x that became unnecessary to define the model inside of the factory. So this is also a change to Laravel 9. And then shift introduces anonymous migrations instead of file names like create users table. Those anonymous migrations appeared in 8.70 something from what I remember. And then they became the default in Laravel 9. And I will also link in the description below the video about them. So now if you run in Laravel 9 PHP artisan make migration, it will generate this instead of actually class name. So this is also a change related to Laravel 9, but then there's a question. It's not a change that is necessary, but the change that make your code in style of Laravel 9, like it was created with Laravel 9. So the question to you, do you want to make those changes? So do you want your projects to be upgraded with old code and old styling just to make it work with Laravel 9? Or do you want to change the code completely like it was created with Laravel 9, including all the config values, anonymous migrations, and stuff like that. So that's what Shift is doing here. So it went through all migration files and changed those. That's part of those 120 files. Then the translation file was in the main folder. Again, in Laravel 9, it's a change. There's no resource lang, there's just lang. 
and the older files were actually moved to the upper folder. From what I remember, both would still work. In Laravel 9, you can use both resource lang or lang, but by default, the new files will be searched in lang folder. So this is what Laravel Shift tried to do, rename the file and moved it one level higher including the files from vendor which is spotty laravel backup notifications translations and then we go to package json i'm not even sure that laravel shift should touch the front end but anyway upgraded the axios changes for php unit to use env instead of server i didn't even know that this was needed but okay i guess the syntax is env now then a few more styling changes again to the routes as well and deleted server file and that's it so now I have a choice whether to merge it all and run the latest Laravel 9 with Laravel 9 styles or review that branch and make necessary changes, accept something, reject something and pick it up manually or just ignore what Laravel Shift has done and just upgrade the easier way by just upgrading Composer JSON and testing if the older functionality still works after upgrading Composer. It will be much less changes but then some of those changes will not be in Laravel 9 style. So as you can see, that huge number of 120 files changed kind of makes sense because what Laravel Shift does is performing a lot of upgrades. For example, the migrations were like 30 files or something, then languages were 30 files or something, then a lot of styling changes, which were not directly related to Laravel 9, but still important. And then the syntax configuration and ENV changes, which are not that visible and you wouldn't even notice them probably if you don't work specifically with those areas and functions. But it tries to suggest the upgrades to Laravel 9 syntax. So what do you think? Probably the first question to you would be, would you pay $19 for such shift? And the second question, would you accept all the changes that I've run through in that GitHub pull request? Interestingly, for those who want to upgrade from older versions from before 8 to 9, for example, you need to do it version by version. If you want to use Laravel Shift, you need to purchase, for example, if you're on Laravel 6, you need to purchase Shift to 7, then merge that, then purchase Shift from 7 to 8, then merge that, and then from 8 to 9 and merge that. So it is more expensive also, and maybe more work to merge it individually every time, but it may save money in the long run. If you try to do it manually instead, it may take longer hours. Of course, it depends on your project, what packages you use, what features do you have, do you have automated tests or not? I mean, how quickly can you test the changes suggested by Laravel Shift? And a lot of variables are in place, of course. But what is your opinion? Or if you have used Laravel Shift, what was your experience? Were you happy? And if not, why not? Let's discuss in the comments below and see you guys in other videos.